I'm Charlie. I work for Octopus Electric Vehicles who work with EO um, to put chargers in at people's houses when they buy an electric car. So I am a racing driver um, and here I am with my mum with my racing car and I grew up loving racing cars. So I fell in love with a man called Colin McRae and he made me fall in love with cars. But there's one big problem with racing cars. That is that they're very expensive and they waste a lot of energy. So you use a lot of brakes, you use a lot of tires, and the one thing you use more than anything else is a lot of petrol. So this is my racing car. And when I drive that, I have to put fuel into it. So I pour petrol into it, and then the car burns that petrol. And it makes my car go forward. This is an engine. The way an engine works is it pulls in petrol and it pulls in air, so the same air that we breathe. And it mixes those two things, it sets it on fire, and then it pushes all of those gases back out into the atmosphere. But once it's been mixed, we can't breathe it anymore. And the world can't breathe it anymore either because it's burnt something called oxygen and then that becomes CO2, so that becomes carbon dioxide. What that means is that we get gases that enter the atmosphere and then stop us when we're on our way to school, having clean air to breathe, but also can affect the environment. So that's where electric cars come in for me. The one on the left is the battery that you would normally put in your TV remote, and the one on the right absolutely is a Tesla battery. In a Tesla, there's about 7,000 of those batteries. So on the right, the silver one, I tried to point at it, but you can't see what I'm pointing at. So on the right, the silver one, there's about 7,000 of those, and they line the entire underbody of the car. So they sit underneath the seats. So here's a picture of the car that they would go in. So do you see at the bottom there, you've got that slight bulge underneath the door. That is where all the batteries sit. And the electricity provides power to the motor, which is the same as if anybody's got a remote control car in the house, it works the same way. So what happens is that when we sit in the driver's seat, and we press the throttle to go, the power from the batteries goes to the motor. And the motor then spins. One of the big things about my racing cars is a lot of rubbing. There's a lot of things rubbing backwards and forwards. So when we create friction, we wear stuff away. Does that make sense? And in, a, in an engine, we have lots of that friction. We have lots of that rubbing. And that means that it's not as efficient. So when I put my petrol in there and I'm burning it, a lot of that is turned to noise, which is friction. A lot of that is turned to heat, which is friction. And a lot of that is turned into pushing the car forward and the gases, absolutely. In an electric car, that's why an electric car is nearly silent. Because a lot less energy is being used to rub and an awful lot more energy is being used to push the car forward. So your electric car has about 41 parts, 41 moving parts, maybe a little bit less now. Traditional car, our normal car, has about 20 to 30,000 moving parts. So if we think about that, there's a lot less to go wrong. That is the Tesla key. Is it a real key? So here is the Tesla just here. And you're absolutely right. Let me walk around to the front of the car so you can all see it. So that there is a Tesla Model 3. Can everybody see it okay? Amazing. So 
as we'll walk around to the front a wee bit so you can see. So as we were talking about earlier, the batteries all sit down at the bottom here and the motors sit in between the wheels at the back and at the front. In some cars, it's only at the front and in other cars, it's only at the back. Now to open the car, I've already opened it, so I'm going to cheat and go shut it again. It's just you tap the card just there and that opens the car up for us. So the motor, you're right, the motor sits underneath here in the back and in the front, here is the car. So this is what I see when I'm driving. Here's my steering wheel. There's no traditional dashboard. Everything is on here. So I can load in and see my maps. Now the cool thing being that because an electric car is, is, is a new way of thinking, people think about it in a new way, everything in the car is new. So I don't have any buttons. There are no buttons in this car. Everything is done through my big screen. So if I want to put on the lights, I tap on in and I can turn on my lights. If I want to drive to Glasgow, can anybody guess where my accent's from? I just tap it in on the sat nav and away we go. Now something we haven't talked about yet is charging. So a lot of people think that electric cars are slow. Well, they're not. This is one of the fastest cars you can ever drive, this one. Um, but also people think that they're slow in getting places because you can't charge your car quickly. What you'll see is that there's a whole load of red chargers that are about to come up on the map. What they do is they charge the car really, really fast. So they go, they charge it at the back, amazing. So they go really fast. They'll charge this car. To get to Glasgow, I would have to stop for about 40 minutes. But in two separate, two separate drives, we can drive from London to Glasgow and it's going to take us seven hours, which is about the same as in a petrol car, except it's much, much, much cheaper. An electric car, and remember we were talking about that friction, that noise and that heat. Do you remember all of that? We're wasting money because we're burning it and we're turning it into heat and we're turning it into noise and we're turning it into gases. Absolutely. And once it's gone, we can't ever use it again. But with electricity, if we're getting it from wind or from solar or from tidal, from the sea, we don't have any of those problems because what happens is that the wind's always going to be there. The sun's always going to be there. The sea's always going to be there. That keeps giving us energy over and over and over and over again. And that helps us to power our car. So people were asking about where the charger is. So let's go have a wee look at that. So the charger is round the back here. And it just pops open like that. And then you just plug your car in. What does the, does the screen use up the battery? That's a brilliant question, Sharon. The screen doesn't use up any battery, really, because the battery could power your house for about two weeks. So the car could power your house for about two weeks. Using things like the screen, the radio, the lights, really doesn't take up any energy in the real grand scheme of things. But the thing that, if you think about that, this car is more efficient, so it uses less energy than your petrol car. If I go out with a race car and I do 10 laps in my race car, which is about a 12 to 15 minute race, I can use the same amount of energy as my house does in about a month. So this is where electric cars make a big difference quickly is I'm just going to run you through the charging so this is remember we were talking about that battery at the bottom and then the motors you can see that on the screen here 
So you can see here's your battery, here's your motors that sit in between the wheels, and that's what gives the car performance, and that's what pushes the car forward. All the batteries at the bottom make the weight of the car really low down, so it's quite a heavy car. It's a very heavy car, but because the weight's really low down, it's really good. It show your energy. Yes, so this is how many miles I've got left on this tank. So you can see that this, this battery isn't full. So the green is how much battery I've got left. And, uh, come on car, that is how far I can go on that charge. So with this, which must be about 87% full, let's check that, uh, about 85 I reckon actually, display, let's go in energy oh 78 so with 78 percent left so about 80 percent i can do 241 miles that's a long way so i'm going to go plug my car in so you can see that i'm just going to grab my charger but that what is the top speed what is the top speed of my tesla so this car here will do 162 miles an hour i've never done that on the real road especially in this how much energy can it take so this, so it did 160, 264 miles an hour, it's very fast. It will do zero to 60 faster than a Lamborghini and it will go around a circuit faster than an old McLaren F1. So it's, it's a very, very special car, this. How much energy can it take? So it can take 74 kilowatts, kilowatt hours. A kilowatt hour is a unit of energy, so it's how much power or how much power we use over a set period of time. And this car can have 74 of those kilowatt hours. Perfect. Is it works out at about a penny a mile. If you're charging at your house, it works out at about a penny a mile. How much is the energy is the energy in the car? So that's what I was saying. It's about 74 kilowatt hours to give you an idea that could run your telly just your telly alone for maybe a month maybe more and um, probably more actually um, and how much that's about a penny a mile so it's for every mile you do you spend about a penny to do that journey and if we think about that with petrol Petrol is closer to 15 pence a mile. So if you're doing a lot of miles, it adds up and it's expensive. So what I'm going to do is we're going to try and go back to my laptop and show you a quick video of me racing a Tesla so you can see what it's like when the car is driving. Maybe if you play, does anybody play Forza or Gran Turismo or anything like that? Yes, perfect. You'll know that you can add bits to the car and add engines and things like that. Mm -hmm. So with an electric car, tune it, yeah. With an electric car, you don't tune it by adding bits. What you do is you sit on your computer, you build a little bit of code, so you code in on your computer, and then you send it as a software update to the car, and that then makes the car faster. So Tesla do that, you like coding, amazing stuff. So that's how it now works. Your car can receive over the air upgrades. So Tesla and Elon Musk sat, sits there and they work away and they make it faster and then they press a button and then it just uses your Wi-Fi and it downloads that upgrade. So it's not like uh, tuning your car on Forza that you add a turbo or add a new exhaust, because it doesn't have any of that. It just needs the computer to think a little bit differently. So this is me um, driving at Goodwood Festival of Speed. Um, and this is a Tesla. So this is the bigger Tesla. This is the Model S. What does aerodynamic mean? I'm gonna pause this very, very quickly for you. So aerodynamic means if you are running, so if you think about you walking, if you're walking, there's nothing really pushing against you. But if you're running, you can think about your t-shirt gets pulled back in the wind. So when you're running, the car does the same thing. And when we're walking about, 
the air is really thin, not thin, but it's, it's, we don't really feel it. As we start to get faster and faster and faster, we're pushing air against itself. So we're making it really tough. You see, it really goes quite quickly. And you can feel that in your tummy. And you can feel that pull all the way back. You can feel that pull right the way into your seat. And then as you go around the corner, you can move. That's your G-forces. But right now, all that air is being pressed. And I'm using a lot of battery now. And now I start to break. And as I'm breaking, I'm reusing power back into the batteries. So I hit about 120 miles an hour on this run, but the car, as we said outside, it does about 160 miles an hour. Oh, this is awesome. So again, all that weight's nice and low. See how flat the car stays? If we did that in a normal petrol car, we'd get a lot of body roll. Guys, I am running out of time. Any questions, let us know on Twitter or on Facebook um, and give us a wee chat. You've got more lessons coming up. Um, Miles can talk a little bit more about that in an email. I don't know what's coming up and when, but yeah, any questions, let us know. Thank you so much.